Welcome back to the show. So already we had told you that we're going to be bringing a HR expert, one who has been in the business of human resource development for nothing less than 10 years. And this is someone who is actually in charge of HR management for Punika, Punuka Solicitors and Attorneys in Nigeria. And she's someone who has helped in training people, even outside the corporate world, and mentoring young people. I'm talking about no other person but Mrs. Mary Ende. Welcome to Hello Nigeria. Thank you. Okay, so great to have you. You look Thank beautiful, you. by the way. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so tell me, um, who is Mary Eddy and what is she about when it comes to human resource development? Okay, I'm a human resource expert. I'm a generalist. I perform human resource functions across the entire roles of human resource from recruitment to onboarding to performance management all the way to exit management. So I have experience doing that and also consulting for other companies aside mm. where I work as a human resource manager. Okay, so now um, as someone who has been in that line of work for mm. the time you have, now what are some of the things that you know that are um, common happenings when it comes to human resource development in companies or the corporate world? One of the things I've noticed is that in my experience, most organizations don't pick out a human resource person to take up that role. So they just pick up anybody they see and like, oh, come on, to take the role of a human resource person in our organization. And so you see the issue of a lot of unqualified people, people who are not knowledgeable in that area handling the position. And of course, you can imagine what the results are. They don't do it so well. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at work ethics. Work ethics, work ethics in the workplace. Now, what are some of the likely ethics that you expect? Anybody seeking employment or one that has just been employed that they should follow or apply in the workplace? Well, you know, growing up, everybody talk about work ethics from the angle of hard work, but I totally don't agree with that. Mm. So the major work ethics we are pushing forward now is working smart. So we encourage young people coming into work world to work smart. And in any case, they don't want to even work hard. So working smart works better for them. Mm. So another work ethic people need to is to be diligent. There's this uh, usual thing that you find among Nigerian workers that they just want to do it haphazardly. So but that's one ethic that people need to embrace. If you're coming into work world, you should learn to be very diligent in whatever you're doing. Okay. So that's one ethic that I think people should embrace, working smartly and being diligent. Okay, so moving a bit from what you have just mentioned, concerning work ethics, and there's been this issue generally, especially in the side of the women, concerning sexual harassment in the workplace. Mm -hmm. And this is something we can't even make or beat the drum concerning it enough. Um, how do you think this can be curbed in the workplace? I think um, it's quite sad that so far so good, aside legal state, nobody have actually done a proper legislation to bring to book people who have found one thing in this area. But of course, what we do is that as human resource people, one of the things we can use to work on it is make sure that it's in the code of conduct for your organization. As a human resource person, whenever I'm working on, say, a handbook for a client or for even my organization, I ensure that it is quite watertight, the rules, the conduct that is expected of an individual. Mm. So once you cross the line, you get penalized. Mm. But I wish that it can be taken further so that you can actually be penalized beyond just the four walls of your office. If there are le legislations, if there are laws that punish such people. But right now, we don't have that much in our legislation. We hear Me Too all over the world, but it's just no real Me Too here mm. because there are no laws to help you out. It's so difficult to prove those things in court. Okay, so now, in your experience, between, uh, is it just women that get harassed in the workplace? Of course not. Okay. But everybody talks about mostly the female one, but it's both ways. So, basically, uh, sexual harassment is any unwanted sexual advancement towards an individual in the workplace, particularly when it's coming from somebody more senior. And I know that men go through it also. So you see a young boy who comes into an organization and have a boss who is interested. And so they, <laughs> there's this tension and all that. 
but most times people do not recognize in fact if you go out and say it as a young man people actually verify you are like you're weak yeah you're, as in what are you talking about mm. but the truth of the matter is that it's not just about the women and but we have to make sure that we protect the men as well as the women okay so going back to the place of the women some people have said it's because of the way she was dressed at the office mm -hmm. she was not dressed covered enough mm -hmm. and that's why she got harassed do you agree that how her lady dresses i absolutely dresses? don't agree whilst i encourage people to dress very corporately dress how you want to be addressed at work but i think that you cannot use that as an excuse whether you're exposing some part of your body or not or you're poorly dressed for work it doesn't encourage or give anybody the um the excuse to harass you mm. yes i oh. don't agree okay okay good now i'm going to take it further by asking Aside sexual harassment, is there any form, any other form of abuse that um, people or employees in the workplace face that you have had to deal with as a human resource person? One thing that people do a lot at workplace in Nigeria is bull bullying. There's a lot of bullying in workplace. So because somebody is superior to you, they act like gods over you, which is not right. You are all there to work. So there has to be some level of protection against people bullying each other at workplace. That's one major thing. So you see a superior use abusive language. Some of them actually even get violent. I used to have a boss who would tell me all sorts of things the first time I started working. And you know, one day I was, I was young, so I could just get up and say, I'm done, and I walked away from that job. But a lot of people can't do that because, again, the economic situation is so bad, so people stick in there while they are being bullied. So that's another major thing that we need to speak out about. People being maltreated at work. It is work, it should be professional. But people usually don't do that. So we need to talk about that also. Why talking about sexual harassment and other things that happen at workplace? Okay, so looking um, from your answer right now, you talked about the economic situation. Let's take it from this angle. What do you think, uh, how well do you think between the last five years and now that the government has fared well in comes to workers' welfare in Nigeria? Mm. Well, I, want, I don't want to dabble into government issues, <laughs> but frankly, I'm not sure they have done much until the recent time uh, they're trying to pass a law that will improve the earning power of government workers. Mm. But aside that, even the improvement does not make any sense because if you look at the earning power, say, five years ago, how much was dollar exchanging for a Naira? So even if you're earning, like, say, a 15, eight, an 18,000, which was the minimum wage uh, five years ago, and you start earning 30,000 or 28, whatever they decide right now, it does not even make any sense because if you check the exchange rate as at five years ago and now, there's not been any improvement. Mm -hmm. And even in other areas, we used to, growing up, I used to know that people who work for government house, had a um, housing uh, scheme for them, like yeah. the 1004 we used to have. All yeah. that has flown through the window. So mm. workers are out there trying to fend for themselves. And the worst is for our retirees. Nobody's even taking care of them. So I don't think that um, it's quite impressive. There's a lot that needs to be done. Government needs to deal with the issues of remuneration, welfare in terms of um, health care, in terms of uh, housing, even basic amenities. For those of us who live in Lagos, it could go as, three hour, as much as three hours for you to commit to work if the roads were good. If there was basic transport system in place, if just a few things were right, it would be that difficult. So I think there's a lot that the government can still do to make workers' life better in Nigeria. All right, Mary, I'm just going to hold your word there. Uh, we're on the show today, of course, and uh, we're talking about uh, workplace, the ethics in the workplace. And we've discussed a lot of things, you know, concerning that. You have the phone numbers on your screen, and we'd like you to call in to the show Ask out their HR expert questions you would love to be answered and also uh, make your comments concerning this. So still talking about um, development of skills, um, it's, what are the advice? We hear these days companies are doing trainings. They're carrying out trainings for their staff, mm -hmm. for newly employed staff. Do you think this is good and do you think they're doing it right enough? Well, it, it's bad enough that uh, our educational system is not very impressive. And like I tell most people, the problem we have in Nigeria is not so much of unemployment, 
is actually an, a problem of unemployability. Mm. So eventually when you pick from the crop of people we have leaving school with that, who are half-baked, not their own fault, is the system. Take for instance, as to have, you know, strike. So the next thing, they just churn out some people who are half-baked and you have to engage those people in your organization. So the least you can do is to prepare them a little more to be able to work for you. So I think organizations are doing it right. It's very important that before you actually put people into your system, you need to like train them. And aside even training them on skills, you need to understand the culture of the place they are coming to work in. Mm. So the onboarding process have to have a lot of training, induction, orientation about what goes on in that office for the person to quickly fit in and adapt into the system. If that is taken away, probably you have people who come in who are not able to adapt, who are not able to understand what is going on, and they're going to be misfit for the organization. And at the end of the day, you're not going to reap any benefit from engaging them. Okay, so now we're still speaking on training uh, in the workplace. Some people have just said it's only when you employ those that will be within the premises and the office walls, those ones are the ones that should be trained. But then I had an experience where I actually saw um, uh, a certain gate man that had a different opinion. I'm going to talk about that. Let's take this call from Kingsley from Abuja. Oh, wow, we lost Kingsley, but please call us back, Kingsley, so we can have this conversation with you. So now I was talking about a certain company where I went to, and I saw a gate man smile at me. And he was really polite. And everyone else there was the same way. And then I went somewhere else. They were both in the same uh, line of business, and it wasn't the same reception. And I noticed that every time people came into the walls of the people who smiled from the entrance, it was more warm and welcoming. Do you think it's just those that will be in the office space that should be trained, or everybody should be trained? Absolutely. You had a good experience to, as in, to base this discussion on. Like I always say that work is like a relay. So everybody in the organization, from the security to the cleaner, to those who work in the office, to the management, to the CEO, we are all on a relay. So if the security man doesn't do his job well, the CEO is never going to be able to do his own work, work well. Mm. So if you do not train across board, you're going to have weak links. And so for instance, probably you have a CEO who have been able to get in a wonderful brief from a client and while the client is trying to walk into the office, security man is rude to him and he bounces off. So what's the use? So if you do not allow everybody to know what the organization is about. So th again, that brings us back to what we talked about, inducting a new employee mm. or training a new employee. It's so important because if you don't, they don't even understand what the organization is about. So you need to train everybody, starting from security men to janitors or cleaners, front desk people. Like I say, front desk people are the face of the organization. So if you manage to scale through the security people who are not so bold, when you get to the front desk person, they are usually very bold. So if they're not well trained, they either make or mar the business. So you mm. cannot re you, uh, uh, reduce your training to or limit your training to just maybe the operational people in the office. Everybody needs to be pre trained so they understand what the office is about. I read up somewhere, someone said that. When right. I, okay. Please just hold your word. We have Samuel from Oweri. Hello, Samuel. Hello. Yes, welcome to Hello Nigeria. Yes, good evening. This is Samuel. Good evening. I was going to ask Mary, what does she suggest? Mm -hmm. A transport system in uh, Lagos is so busy, and uh, maybe to get to work, you have to spend like hours to get to work. Okay. What if one works from home? Can companies and organizations make that provision? If you can work from home and um, to deliver your job, do I have mm. to come to work? Or should I work from home and um, can companies and organizations make such laws or make such a provision where individuals can work from home instead of taking out the stress of getting to work and before you get to work, you're already fucked out and then um, you try to get back home, you get back home by 12 or 10 in the midnight. Mm -hmm. And you have to... I don't know if you are getting that question. Yes, we do. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Samuel. Samuel, yeah. thank you for your question. You're obviously uh, very familiar with the future of work, and most people are going to be working remotely in the future. That is a true thing, but whether you like it or not, certain people have to still get to the office. Take, for instance, I work for a law firm. 
as much as we are very technically driven in my office, we run on technology. I actually sometimes work from abroad. So I don't have to even be in Nigeria to work in my office. But the truth of the matter is that, for instance, a lawyer needs to appear before a judge. He has to enter Lagos traffic and get to Igbo Shere. It's real. So <laughs> whilst we can reduce it, I agree, even by using flexible time, so if organization embrace such things, so some people can come in at 10, not that everybody is hitting the road at 5, 6, to make it to office mm. at 8. So organization can look at flexible time, so some people can come in at 10, some can come in at 12. So the times we are on the road, we reduce uh, the number of traffic we have at each time. So, but that can help. But whether you like it or not, whether we are using technology or not, some of us still need to hit the road. Okay. So yes, indeed, we can do that. All right. Thank you so much, Mary, for being here and discussing uh, human resource development and uh, work ethics in the workplace. Thank you so much. So how can people follow you? Well, I'm on Instagram as Mary Opata. Okay. Mary O-P-A-T-A. Okay. And on Twitter, Facebook? Uh, Facebook, Mary Opata. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, <laughs> Mary. You. All right. To enjoy more of these our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.